Welcome back to Dukascopy TV. Delegates from around the world failed on Friday to agree to a UN arms treaty which would regulate the multi-billion dollar industry. Joining me today to discuss the political and economical implications is Alexandra Votiver from Webster University in Geneva. Alexandra, thank you very much for joining me. Now, could you tell the viewers and myself a little bit more about the importance of this landmark treaty and what exactly it was trying to achieve? It's a very important and a very interesting treaty because there has been in the 1970s, 1980s, 1990s quite a lot of success um, with regards to nuclear and strategic disarmament. But there's one specificity with these strategic arms. All of these negotiations were basically bilateral. They were only between the United States and the Soviet Union. There have been efforts uh, towards conventional disarmament, of course, in the 1920s, later in 1970s, uh, but most of these were uh, eventually failures because of the multilateral uh, nature of these negotiations. You have a lot of uh, uh, different uh, delegations a lot of different uh, member states that need to agree. So the uh, opportunity, and we have been negotiating on this uh, treaty since 2006, the opportunity to now have a, a set date for a, for a treaty, this is quite a, quite a novelty. And this time we're no longer talking about strategic weapons, we're no longer talking about heavy conventional weapons, tanks or airplanes, but we're really talking about the worst killers today, which are small arms. Now, even if the treaty had been agreed, I understand it would only extend as far enough as allowing each member state to govern, their, like, to make their own rules, basically, with small arms. What sort of impacts do you think this will have on the global economy? Well, first of all, indeed, it was absolutely necessary to not discuss the question of arms production or stockpiling, but only the issue of regulating trade. So this is uh, uh, this is quite a quite a novelty here. Uh, number two, it's very clear there is no uh, international organization that is able to monitor uh, the different uh, national legislations, and therefore the idea of this treaty is really to uh, regulate to harmonize the regulations of uh, member states uh, with the failure of such a treaty, we will continue to have what we have had so far, which means that w there will be some states that regulate and are very transparent, and other states which are less scrupulous, of course. Okay, and what sorts of implications do you think this could have in terms of growth for making money from the arms trades, do you think? Well, fundamentally, uh, one of the things, one of the conclusions that has come from four years of research on uh, the issue of small arms is that most of the uh, sale of small arms uh, happens through intermediaries and brokers, and these are essentially private uh, brokers, consultants. Uh, we're not necessarily talking about uh, state agencies or, or uh, government uh, agencies uh, uh, negotiating this, uh, this trade. So what we will see most probably is have reinforced legislation and restrictions, uh, especially in the Western countries and perhaps the United States. Uh, this remains to be seen, but essentially uh, Western Europe has been the, the driving force for this. Uh, African countries, sub-Saharan African countries, uh, have uh, vouched to uh, increase their, uh, uh, their grip, their hold and their control over arms trade. However, uh, most probably we will see uh, growth in the area of uh, arms uh, sales in uh, most of Asia and most probably also in um, the Middle East and most probably also in Latin America. Now, one of the reasons that the most recent talks were held in the US was because of President Obama's, he changed policy in 2009 um, to support such a treaty. Do you think the breakdown of these negotiations could have a negative effect on his campaign this year? Well, 2009 was indeed the uh, year uh, President Obama received the Nobel Peace Prize. So what I can say is that uh, most probably the personal line of the American president has been uh, strong towards the uh, limitation of small arms trade. Uh, we have uh, also seen in the area of strategic disarmament in 2010, in February 2010, the, the signature of, uh, of an agreement with, uh, with Russia. But let's be extremely clear, uh, the reason for the cold feet of the uh, United States government with regards to the, the signature uh, to this uh, treaty, all of the different clauses and, um, and uh, for example, uh, eliminating uh, munitions and, and having other sorts of, of caveats uh, comes essentially from the primacy of national uh, politics. So I think uh, probably uh, the stalemate uh, with regards to this treaty is probably good for President Obama's election. 
Okay, and finally, despite this sort of stalemate that you mentioned, um, the Secretary General mentioned that there is sufficient common ground to the quote we can see behind us for the member states to move on and hopefully, um, you know, come to an agreement in the not too distant future. Do you have a positive outlook on this, and do you think it will have the next, like the essential effect on society and politically, economically that they're hoping for? Well, definitely there are already uh, legislations and regulations that are in place with regards not to the uh, sale of arms, uh, but definitely to the use of arms. And I'm thinking in particular of the Geneva Conventions, uh, international humanitarian law. So what I would say is let's concentrate on what we have so far. And, and I think that uh, most, uh, most probably we will be successful at uh, at least alleviate uh, the unnecessary suffering from, from our conflict uh, if, we, if, we generously, uh, if we genuinely uh, apply the, uh, the present regulations. With regards to the recent events, obviously the terrible shooting that happened sort of last week, do you think this has become even more in the forefront of people's minds and that something really needs to be done to show that there is a stance with regards to small arms? Definitely. Unfortunately, and, and I would say that this uh, has clouded the, the, the judgment of uh, uh, probably uh, most of the uh, world's opinions and, and also perhaps some of the negotiators and, uh, and political decision makers. Unfortunately, there is a very strong confusion between uh, international arms sales on one side, and you're selling to governments, you're selling to uh, insurgents, you're se uh, selling to uh, revolutionary movements on, on one side, and the other uh, issue that has been confused with this has been gun control, and that's a national uh, issue. So unfortunately, this, uh, this situation, and in particular in the, in the United States, the gun lobby is so, is so strong mm -hmm. and has pressured, uh, I'm sure, the, the U.S. government. Unfortunately, these, uh, these two uh, issues that are not necessarily connected uh, unfortunately cloud and, and prevent us from, from reaching a decision. Alexander, thank you very much for joining us today and sharing your insight once again. Thank you. Thank you very much. Now that's all that we have time for just now but please click back to Dukascopy TV for more news and interviews. Thank you. Goodbye.